Dollhouse people, Whitney Labrie here, and yes, it is true. I do get to interview Jareth the Goblin King from the movie The Labyrinth, so you should definitely watch the whole video and see that at the end. So in the meantime, let's take a look at where we were last week. I had installed the fireplace, the water fountain, finished the alley, and did a little bit of decorating. And I feel like it's turning out to be a little magical wonderland for the Garfield dollhouse backyard. So this week, I want to add something really special. And what I want to add is water. Yes, water effects. I really feel like that water fountain needs the look of real water running down it. I feel just feel like that would just add a lot more magic to this backyard. So in order to do this, I have two things. I have something called water effects. And then I have another product called Realistic Resin Water. And those are the two items that I'm gonna use to make the look of real running water on my water fountain. I'm super stoked about this because this is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. And now I have the opportunity to do it. So let's do it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure my water fountain. And what I'd like to do is take the measurement and then just add about half an inch to an inch extra to accommodate for mistakes and folding of the water and it's about three inches for the first fall so I'm gonna do about four inches now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two different types of water and the reason I'm gonna do that is because I really am trying to go between two different water type waterfall types and so I'm gonna do both and see which one I like better so the first one I'm gonna do is I just take my wax paper and I'm gonna take my water effects and I'm gonna make these thick squiggly lines close together and then once I'm done with that I'm just gonna take my toothpick and I'm gonna start combining those three lines together and I'm gonna run the toothpick back and forth but also in a downward motion to kind of give it the look of water running downward and I'm gonna play with it a little bit until I really get it looking the way I want. You can kind of see that I'm running that toothpick down. And then at the end of the fall, I am kind of fluffing it out a little bit down or feathering it out, I should say, so that it would look like the way that water would hit the base of like a waterfall or maybe the way it would look going over a rock. Okay, so that's the first waterfall that I'm gonna make. The second one I'm going to make is a much clearer one. It's gonna dry very, very clear. They're actually both gonna dry fairly clear, but the first one will have more of a cloudy look to it. So this time I'm just gonna take my water effects and I'm going to make these thin outlines. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my resin water and I'm gonna fill the middle in with a nice amount of the resin water, trying not to go over those darker white lines of water effects. And then I do take my toothpick and just make sure that there are no holes or no gaps um, after that's in. Now, this is going to take a good 24 hours to fully dry so that I can play with it. This is what it looks like when it's dry. You can see the thicker one, the, the water effects, very thick and it's a little cloudy. And this is after 24 hours and it will actually become less cloudy the longer it sits. The second one is very clear, you can see that because the water effects wasn't as thick and the center is that resin water, so you see. And then because I put it on wax paper, it's pretty easy to peel off, so watch this. So that's the water effects, what that looks like just coming off the wax paper. And then here's what the resin water one looks like just coming off the paper. So now that I have both, I'm going to see which one I like better and I'm gonna put it up against that water fountain. Now this is the water effects and I really like it. The only thing is it feels a little thick and I feel like it might be a little too thick and it might have more of a rushing water feel and I don't really want a rushing water feel. The, what, the look I'm kind of trying to go for is like this photo here. So I think the better option is gonna be my resin water, which is this one. You can see I've, it's pretty long so I'm gonna make some cuts to make sure that it fits. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my water effects again and I'm gonna add a little bit to the top because this is gonna actually act as also my glue to adhere my waterfalls to my water fountain. 
All right, so I'm gonna use my toothpick and kind of spread it out a little bit to the top. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more water effects to the bottom. And that will also kind of almost look like the way water would look if it was kind of falling down and splashing on the bottom a little bit. So that's how I'm gonna use that water effect. So you can see I'm just adding a little bit more and what's really nice is this takes a little while to dry, so you can kind of play with it and, you know, and keep moving it around until you're very comfortable with the way that it looks. It's pretty forgiving at this point, so kind of play with that. I'm going to add another one to the top. I'm going to have three falls at the top and the bottom of this water fountain. Then you can see this is what it looks like on day one or actually five minutes after I've added everything. You can see a lot of white water. That will that will all become much more clear over the next couple of days. So I'm just gonna leave that there and let that dry. Before I move on, however, I am gonna add some more realistic water. So I'm adding it to the top and kind of letting it flow down. And I'm also gonna fill in the base that already had resin in it and some koi fish or some goldfish down in there, but it's really aged and it had begun to crack. So prior to doing anything that you just saw me do, I did take a toothbrush and I scrubbed that top layer and just really got all the dirt and dust off of it. Once it dried, I added the waterfall feature that we just added and then I'm gonna add this resin water so that way it's gonna dry much clearer and it will not completely eliminate that look of that old resident on the top but it will certainly improve the look of it and again this is going to take about 24 hours to dry and then it will take a little bit longer than that for that water effects to become you know pretty clear now that that's done we're just going to let that sit and dry and we're going to move on to the fireplace so this is how i left it last week and what I want to do this week is I need to paint in the back part of the fireplace to give it a little bit of depth, make sure, make it look like it goes back a little bit further. And I also want to add some logs. These little logs I made out of balsa wood, I just had some leftover balsa wood from another project and I just cut them down and created these little logs and then painted them a blackish brown look. And then of course my lights are already in there. I want the flicker of that light to kind of be seen. So I just, I'm just gonna glue them in and then make sure that you can still see the fire. Now we're gonna decorate. So I have uh, some odds and ends. I've got this wooden candlesticks, candle, I've got some flowers, I've got these glass domes, I've got a little bust here. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some Mod Podge to the top of that fireplace, and then I'm gonna decorate. Yay! I have to say that I'm loving the way that this looks. This definitely feels a little magical to me. I hope it's magical to you. I could probably still add some stuff, to be really honest, if I if I felt like I needed to. I did add a little black to that fountain to kind of age it up also. And so that's what that looks like. Now, the next thing I need to do is, as I said before in the other one, I want to add a second level one of the ending scenes sarah's going to overcome the power of jared the goblin king and they're in this really neat area where it's those stairs and staircases and these platforms that are like an infinity platform right where there's no edge really i mean there's an edge but there's no balcony there's you know really no protection and so i kind of want to create that same look so i've got these this foam that's actually left over from when I cut it out from making the actual walls of this entire diorama. And then I have the staircase that I used in another project a long time ago, and it was actually painted this kind of washed blue, but I'm gonna keep it that color because I think it works. And it's got like this burgundy color on the back, which is fine also. And I have these 
four wooden brackets here as well, and I'm just gonna use those as additional support for underneath this little platform. I have a little bit of this chalky gray finish left over from other projects that you've seen me use this before. I use this quite a bit in the Garfield dollhouse. So I'm gonna paint the platform this color, and then I'm gonna paint the brackets brown, just a regular brown wash, and then I'm going to add some gold to them. And while those dry, I am continuing on with the wire lighting that I have. I'm just going to run it along this wall here and kind of cover it up a little bit with some of my additional moss and get that in place. I'm going to run the lights up underneath the stairs, underneath the platform, and then back around the top so that I can have lights going up and around and then coming down the staircase as well. The second level Level, which I'll probably put plants and stuff up there and then run that wiring around so that I can light that whole area up. Okay, but now we have this really neat little alcove under here under the stairs and I thought it'd be really fun to make it an area that was being used for planting or for potting plants and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and decorate that area as well. Now, I am gluing everything down in this situation. I normally don't do that, but in this case I am because this piece is mobile and I don't want to every time I move it for stuff to be falling over or dealing with it. And I think I'm going to probably leave it like this, even if I eventually do a different backyard for the dollhouse. So this will remain just like this and I'm fine with that. But I'm, I really, I think it's turning out really fun and I, I really do like the way that this is kind of looking, um, certainly inspired by the labyrinth. I do want you to see how you can use this water effects in other ways. It doesn't have to be this dramatic like this waterfall. Here I have used it in the kitchen of my Italian kitchen of my dollhouse and I really wanted to make it look like there was water flowing from the faucet and maybe here I've got like a dirty dish and a sponge that is being cleaned and it's just so fun to have this look. I mean I thought you could use it in the bathroom of course, you could do it in your tub, you can do it like someone's brushing their teeth and the water's running and maybe the toothbrush is hanging on the, on the faucet. So you can really do a lot of fun things with this and I will be doing it again using this product again for the dollhouse front yard because I have some ideas for the front yard that I think that you're going to love. So definitely, you know, stay tuned for that. That'll be um, quite a while down the road because we have so much more to do here. But all right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this program this week. Again, I have so much to do because guess what we haven't done yet. We still haven't done the walking paths through all of those hedges that I did, the actual labyrinth hedges. We don't have accessories. We still have to work on the staircase and the accessories that go there and some other really fun details in that. And I have some other little things up my sleeve that I want to do. So definitely make sure if you haven't subscribed to do that, make sure to turn on your notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. And as always, if you are in need of pre-owned dollhouse furniture and accessories and new stuff too, you can pop on over to my eBay website at Whitney Libri Events where I post new things every week, usually Wednesdays, when my other series comes on What's New Wednesdays, where I reveal treasures that you can buy. So thank you so much for watching. And don't forget the interview with Jareth, the Goblin King from the Labyrinth, is coming up in three, two, one. So first I'd like to say, that uh, it's really great to meet you. I, I'm a little nervous. Don't defy me. I dressed up like you for like my thumbnails, for my videos, and you know, did you see it? You're no match for me. Absolutely not. I mean, like they do say that imitation is like the highest form of flattery, you know, and do you think I should keep going with my channel? Should I just give up? I mean, I don't. Go back to your room. Play with your toys and your costumes. I really feel like this interview isn't really going like how I envisioned it in my mind, you know, I'm just like, oh. 
I've brought you a gift. Oh, okay. You know, that, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, what is it? <laughs> Do you want it? You can keep that. Yeah, I don't. It's, um, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess we can uh, wrap this one up. <laughs>